Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 30th of November to the 6th of December 2020. There is a strange poetry to this week. There's lots of Neptunian energies, so starting this weekend we have Neptune turning direct. Now any of the outer planets turning direct, that takes a long time. So we're looking over the next month really, but Neptune's been retrograde since August. And Neptune represents our inner tuning really, what we feel intuitively in the cells of our body, the emotional frequencies that we tune into and then channel through us. So often in the modern world we're taught to come from the rational, logical, thinking, planning, controlling mind, let the head run the show. But over the last few months, especially in this year of slowdown, we've had an opportunity to really tune in. And where we were once desensitised, become more sensitised to the energy of every day, the energy of every connection with another, and the energy of our own emotional state. Long-held stories from the past, and even possibly past lives, that were weighing us down in our DNA, have been able to come up for inspection with pure intention and released. So this year really has been a gift for us to do some very deep work as we're clearing our energy field and getting ready for some very new vibrant Aquarian energies coming in. So we've been cleansing our field, raising from dense to light, making some space as we go forwards into 2021. What we're being is what we're attracting. So we need to be a clean transmitter receiver and a beacon of high vibrational vision. By Monday we have the full moon lunar eclipse 8 degrees Gemini at 9.32 UK time. So do take a look where 8 degrees Gemini and Sagittarius are for you. The sun is in Sagittarius and the moon is opposite in Gemini. I feel this is a transformative and uplifting flight path, bringing opportunity for change. But this requires mental flexibility and an honest appraisal. So Gemini is the processing mind, Sagittarius is the higher mind, the sage, the wise one. But in a world where we're divided by opinion, objectivity is actually a very liberating force, helping us to assess with perspective and change our views accordingly. So have a look where you're too fixed on one side of the fence, too attached to a strongly held opinion, and then maybe raise up and have a look again with perspective. As there's so much information flooding in, we do need to change our minds regularly, while obviously knowing in our core what is right. So it's a very communicative moon. We can never tell what's going to happen with an eclipse, but there could well be some messages flowing through on this one, some new information and some insight and revelations. As with Neptune turning direct, we are now having the veils lifted. So we've gone inwards, we've retreated deep within to cleanse ourselves, but now as we come out, we will be seeing the world in a truer light. Some of the illusions begin to get removed and a sense of clarity and simplicity replaces confusion. Adding to that, by Tuesday, Mercury moves into Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is to the point, as the arrow of Sagittarius points directly to the galactic center. So even more simplicity and clarity and truth coming in over the next few weeks with Mercury, the processing mind, in Sagittarius, connecting with deep wisdom. And I feel some of the wisdom that we'll be receiving over these few weeks is to do with how we manifest. Our view of life in the physical mental can be very solid, it can be very limiting. And as we head towards the winter solstice and we're changing the way that we co-create and manifest, then Mercury and Sagittarius, I feel, will open us up to receive. And when we are open to receive, we're gifted with many blessings way beyond what the limited mind can envisage. But this will all be about frequency, so when we set our frequency to its highest expression, when we allow that, as we spent most of this year getting rid of what's not us and what's dense, 
then we can sit back with patience and gratitude and see what comes through. A good example of this is your negative mind will always limit, find reasons why not, create blocks and friction. But a lovely way to calm that down sometimes if we're looking at a situation and we can only see one negative outcome is to play and to say, and then something miraculous happened. This then opens up and sets the tone for something much bigger, much better, outside of our conscious control to come in if we can feel that sense of excitement and awe. So with Mercury and Sagittarius, we become the magician, we become the sage, we can have a look at how we've been thinking, how that's been limiting us, but then maybe step in to actually become master of the mind and tend the forge of the heart, opening up with all that hope and optimism of the month of Sagittarius to receive great blessings, but with non-attachment. The rest of the week is really quiet, but generally we're on the path where Jupiter is approaching Saturn for the grand finale of 2020 on December the 21st, the winter solstice, as the sun is reborn. So start to feel into the hope of possibilities opening up here. The whole week seems to be about that. We've been stripped back to a strong and flexible core with Saturn all year. And soon when Jupiter overtakes Saturn, this will act as an amplification for our desires. So it's really important to know who we truly are and what we truly wish for. So with a very truthful sign of Sagittarius, and Mercury there as well, we can really get to the point. There are some very, very high vibrational emotions that we can summon to change our state, and one of those is reverence. I feel reverence can be felt as a combination of awe and gratitude. So it might be a good idea to seek out those higher frequencies and then to download them, to feel them, because this is what takes us out of the mind and changes our state in an instant, is if we can summon and burn brightly some of these very high vibrational emotions. So by Friday, have a look at reverence and how that feels for you. By Friday, I feel it's stop and tune in for visions and insights that bring clarity and simplicity to a once complicated scenario. So that's a bit of a top and tail aspect to the week as we have the eclipse possibly bring some messages through, but then we can go in and find their deeper meaning on Friday. And then a very poetic harmonic comes in at the weekend with Venus trine Neptune. So Venus is in Scorpio, Neptune is in Pisces, we're in water here. And it feels harmonic and peaceful, energies to work or play with, dance in love and swim in your dreams are the words that come to me for this one. So a very poetic and magical, dreamy week, but dreams that we can actually put into application, we can actually start to attract as we're letting go of the personality and separation and really finding our frequency and starting to get the vision for the year ahead, which is very aquarium, so high frequency and vision will be massive themes going forwards. So until then, letting go of anything that's not that, really centering, that's the job that we have for the next couple of weeks. So if you'd like to see where this is happening for you, I am available one-to-one -one or in groups of friends online to have a look at your chart or for tuition on any of my subjects, tarot, astrology, numerology, herbology, all those kind of things, anything esoteric, or for coaching, which is a series of readings sessions where we go deeper and deeper using your chart as a base but exploring breaking behavior patterns letting go of negativity and limitation where your energies could be directed for a most purposeful and harmonic life basically looking at those kind of themes and directions so i am available zoe Hines 7 at gmail.com very happy to talk through those options and put some custom packages together that suit you I post daily on Facebook at AstroZo, on Instagram at ZoeHine7, and these videos and more are on my YouTube channel, Zoe Astro. So I hope you're starting to feel the relief of losing some of the density and mental programming, emotional conditioning of 2020 and before, and that glimmer of hope 
embracing possibility and owning and embodying our highest frequency brings a sense of excitement, potential and empowerment in these incredible times that we're living in. So those are the horoscopes for this week and I'll see you next week.